All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Miss Caitlin and I will be instructing your virtual painting with a twist this week. Um, so today we are gonna be painting this little number right here. You can see it in your cameras. But uh, okay, so you should have all the supplies necessary to complete this project in your kit at home. You should have a small brush, a big brush, a canvas, and then all your paint. Uh, you have black paint, white paint, a silvery black uh, mixture that may look a little silver or a little black, depending on what paint is on the outside of the container. A greenish blue, two of the same color blue, and then a purple. So to start today, we are going to take our big brush and we are going to take the lighter greenish blue color now be careful when you're opening these. You can squeeze them to get it to pop open a little easier. And what you wanna do is you wanna dab your paint in. You're not gonna need a lot of paint. It'll, a little will go a long way. But somewhere towards the middle of the canvas, a little underneath, you're gonna put a nice blue line. Now this is the first color we're gonna put down and you're not gonna need a lot of it. You can just blend that in back and forth real easy like so. Now after you do that, you're not really gonna need that color anymore. You're gonna go to blue next. Now with your blue, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna fill up that whole bottom spot with blue, okay? And you're gonna be able to blend that blue into that green just a little bit. So spread that blue out and then blend it in with that bluish green color, just like so. And then yours does not have to look just like mine, okay? And get that blue down in there. Again, a little paint will go a long way. You will have leftover paint if you're portioning it correctly. However, if you end up using more than you're supposed to, that's okay. Any of these colors will work. So once you have that nice blue down there mixed in with that green, you are gonna take another little dab of blue and mix it with the top of the green. Now that greenish bluish teal color you, you initially put down on the canvas, that is going to be your horizon line for our painting today. So once you have your bottom blue in and your top blue in, you can probably do a little bit more blue up top actually. You wanna bring this up probably so you have just a little bit of white space on the top. And once you have that blue in, you're gonna pop open that purple and go ahead and blend that purple into that blue. Now, you may have noticed I have not been cleaning my brush. Uh, that's not a big deal when you're blending colors because we want those colors to blend together. But let's say we were doing yellows and greens and blues instead of blues to purples, you would definitely want to clean your brush. But all right, so we want to blend that purple into that blue like so. And once you got a nice clean blend, you can go ahead and set your brush in some water. Okay, so part one, easy enough. We got our background in. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is let this dry a little bit. Um, while I let it dry, I'm actually gonna go in on the sides and do the sides of my canvas. As you guys can see, they're white right now. We want to turn them a different color, so I'm gonna go ahead and use blue, but you can use whatever color you want. I'm gonna recommend that everyone use blue just because we have two of the blue in our paint containers. However, that is entirely up to you. Let's go ahead and do that. And then if you don't want to paint the edges of your painting, you do not have to. I just prefer how that finished paint looks with that paint on the sides. 
Now acrylic paint does dry pretty fast, so if you do make any mistakes, don't worry. Uh, acrylic's very buildable, so you can put anything on top of acrylic, as long as it's dry. So if you have a black background, but you want to paint white on top of it, and you're worried that, oh, black is darker than white, how am I going to get this to show up? Just wait for that black paint to dry fully, completely. Otherwise, you're going to get this really gray, muddy color instead of that pure white you want on that background. So before we go ahead and put our next layer on, we really want to make sure that our painting is dry, okay? All right, guys, so after we take a brief break to make sure our background is completely dry before the next, next uh, step, we are going to start with the foreground. So what we wanna do next, we are going to color in the black in here, then we're gonna put in our mountains, and then we're gonna go in with our, our trees and the rest of our foreground, okay? So we're gonna start then by sketching very quickly, if you want, you don't have to, you can, you can just do it if you want, uh, free will, but I threw in a little line right here for my horizon line, right under where that bluish green paint is. And then I threw in some curvy lines to signify the river that we'll be painting. Uh, everyone's is gonna look different. It's okay if yours does not look like mine. It is not a big deal. Art is art no matter what you do. So you're gonna go in with your smaller brush with your black paint. Uh, as you guys notice, you got way more black paint than you have any other color. That's because we're putting a bunch of black paint on the top of our canvas. And if you want to put in extra coats, we wanted you to be able to do that. So go ahead and line this up. Now, when I paint, I am constantly moving my canvas around, okay? So you feel free to do that. It's very helpful to get certain angles when you move around your canvas. Um, and again, these lines do not have to be perfect. So you're gonna go in, line your horizon, and then you are going to line your river. Now, because we're working on perspective, you wanna make the top, the mouth of your river, way smaller than whatever you put at the bottom of the painting. So the closer to the bottom you get, the wider your river should be. Get that black paint in there. And you know what, uh, based on what I'm looking at right now, you may not even have to do a second coat of black because I'm getting pretty good coverage with this. Now remember, you don't need a lot of paint. A little will go a long way. So don't feel like you need to glob it on. You can, you can spread this paint pretty far before it goes thin, so. And then you wanna do your best to make sure that every spot you're painting has an even amount of paint, just so it dries at the same rate. So it, it may seem like common sense, but for, for those who don't know, if you, if you pile a bunch of paint on in one area, it is going to take a lot longer for it to dry than the parts where you have thin layers of paint. So if you're worried about it taking too long to dry, try and spread some of that paint around. And as you can see, our foreground is coming to life a little bit here. Still got to do the other side of the river, but so far so good. And you see I'm pulling some of that paint that I used earlier, spreading it so it's evenly spread across the canvas. And I'm gonna flip, start doing the other side. Now all of this paint except your silver, which we haven't opened yet, should dry with a matte finish, which means it will not have that glossy metallic shine to it. 
Uh, the silver paint is actually silver and, and black mixed together, so that paint will have a metallic shine to it, but that is the only color you have today that will have that effect. Um, the only reason this looks shiny right now is because it's wet, but when it dries, when you'll know it's dry because it will have that nice flat black finish. Then take your time when you're going around these curves. Uh, I've been painting for quite some time now, so it's a little easier for me to, to take those curves, but take your time. It is okay if you are not working this fast. Feel free to pause this video at any time. Go back if you need to. Everyone works at different paces. For all I know, some of you might already be done with your foreground. I'm painting faster than me. <laughs> but again, it's not a competition. We just want our paint to be applied evenly and have full coverage. Now when you finish up the black paint, you're going to want to let it dry a little bit before we start adding in the silver because we do not want the silver to mix in with that black paint on top. So we're going to be adding in silver right above where I'm painting right now on this horizon line. So I'm going to spread some of this paint so it dries a little faster because it's a little piled on over there. All right. And with that, we are going to let that dry. And then we will go on to our next step. All right, guys, so after we have our black paint in and it's fully dried, we can go ahead and open up our silver paint. It should be right next to the white paint in your little uh, paint palettes. Uh, we're gonna be doing these silver mountains that are behind the trees. So go ahead and open that silver paint and take your small brush uh, we're only putting the Silver Mountains on one side of the canvas. It's going to be this left side here, okay? So what I'm going to do is, first and foremost, I'm going to get this silver paint, a line of it, across my background. Now, this silver paint I pre-mixed, okay? So... Um, if you're doing this with a sibling who's also painting with their paint palette, their silver may be a little darker or a little lighter than yours. That's okay though. We only need uh, the silver paint to be a little darker than the actual silver. We just want it so it looks like it's in the shadows, but you can still see it as a background object. So I'm going to start drawing in my mountains with my brush. Again, you don't have to do yours like mine. You don't even have to put your mountains this far if you don't want to. It's all up to you. I am just going to gradually get taller the closer to the edge of the canvas I get. Okay, so make this mountain and then we're gonna go up a little more. And then remember, like I was saying before with the black paint, uh, if you put it on too heavy, it will take longer to dry. So do your best to spread that paint thin, okay? You don't want to pile it on. It will take quite some time for it to dry. And then I'm going to go in with that tall mountaintop about right here. And I think that should be good. Now, if you want your mountains taller, which I think I may make this one a little taller too, by all means, they can be any way you want them to be. They do not have to look like mine. They don't have to look like the sample that you saw at the beginning. You want to do them however you want to do them. I don't know if you guys can tell yet because the paint is still pretty wet, but it should have that glossy finish that metallic finish when it does finally dry. Fill in my mountains over here. Oh, 
And then if you if you don't want to paint mountains, I guess you don't have to, but I recommend putting them down there. I'm gonna clean up my my little mountain here, just a little. All right, and now we are going to let that dry. Now, while we let that dry, we can actually go ahead and start on our trees on the other side. So you can go ahead and clean your brush. And then we can close up that silver paint in case you want to use it later, I don't know. But what you're gonna do, we're gonna start the trees right over here on this right side of the river. So what you're gonna do is dab the very tip of your brush and we want one line for the shorter tree, which will go right there. And I'm gonna do one really tall tree here and then a slightly shorter but still pretty tall tree right there towards the edge, okay? Your lines don't have to be perfectly straight. Don't worry about that at all. Um, now that your black's dry over here, if you happen to see any spots you missed, go ahead and go over those. Uh, you got plenty of black paint to do that, so. And you should still have a good chunk of that left. So, I'm gonna touch up these spots. Um, and then, all right, so when you're making the trees, this is, this is going to be a, a kind of trial and error, okay? Uh, you you kind of just have to dab the tip of your brush and then just kind of doodle them on, like squiggle lines out of the trees. And kind of like you're making a tree a stick figure tree you know you just kind of want to the further down you get the wider you want to make that branch line and it's just really light movements okay you're just gonna bring those trees out like that now I recommend using a small brush for this part because that big brush is gonna make everything clump together and you won't be able to tell that you have lines in your trees. And then I'm gonna dot in there just to fill it in a little bit, but all right, so that's that's our first tree, okay? Uh, our next one is that tall middle tree, okay? And again, just put some paint on the tip of that brush and start using the tip to paint in those branches, okay? Now again, everyone's will look different. It's okay if your branches are thicker than mine or maybe you filled your tree in less than mine. That's okay too. All trees look different and all trees are acceptable in this forest scene. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. As you can see, I'm not really, I'm just very lightly going in, okay? Squiggly lines. And then take your time with this too, okay? I'm going kind of fast, but again, I, I've painted this a couple times before, so I have some practice. If you haven't done this before, it's okay. Now when you get to these bottom parts of the tree, keep in mind that you also have trees next to it, so this paint will overlap into your original tree you already painted. That's okay if it overlaps. Uh, that just shows that this forest we're painting has dimension and is densely covered in foliage. When you go to a forest, usually there's a lot of trees 
of all different sizes. So you want to do your best to depict that. And as you can see, this tree is almost done. I'm going to cover in a couple of those spots in there just so it looks full. But there's tree number two. And then we can finish up with tree number three. Now tree number three is going to kind of go off the canvas a little bit, okay? That's okay. Just because the canvas stopped does not mean our landscape did. So we want to make sure that we are bringing that as close as we can to the edge of the canvas, okay? And then we can fill those in. Now, be mindful when you're doing this that if you glob a bunch of paint on that brush, you are not going to get as fine or detailed of lines as you would had you just put a little bit and use the very tip like you're supposed to. So, get that in there. And then because this particular tree is covered by the one to the left of it, you pretty much already have the left side of that tree finished before you even begin. So now you should have the right side of your painting done. All right? How's it looking, everyone? This is how mine is looking. I don't know if you can tell there's kind of a shine in there, but we're going to let that dry, okay? Um, and then when, once that's dry, we can go ahead and do our background with our moon and our stars. But before we do that, we need to finish the foreground on the left-hand side. That we need to make sure that our mountains are completely dry before we go in with that black. Otherwise, your colors are going to mix together, and it's not going to be the color you need it to be. So make sure before you proceed to this next part that your mountains are completely dry. Now, usually you can tell that something's dry because it is, it is no longer shiny. However, this is metallic paint, so you're going to want to lightly touch it to make sure it's not dry, okay? Now, ours is a little sticky still, so we're going to wait a couple minutes, okay? All right, guys, now that our mountains are completely dry, we can go ahead and go in with the black on the left side so we can do our foreground. So before we start the trees, we're going to take our small brush and we're going to go ahead and put some grass in right on this horizon line, okay? So go ahead and take your clean small brush and just put some paint on that tip and just start bringing down some light lines like so. They don't have to be thick or, or crazy or anything. You just wanna lightly just start pulling your brush. Some lines will be thicker than others. That's just kinda how the brush works. That's what we're working with. It's okay though. If you feel like you have too much paint when you're starting, go ahead and paint some of that somewhere else that's black and just put those little light brush strokes right at the edges over here. I'm trying just to use that tip of my brush so it looks like little grass blades or, or maybe even like little trees in the distance. But you want to pull up, pull down, either way. Just kind of flick the brush real lightly like that. And again, if you see spots over here that didn't cover well enough, feel free to go over them with your black paint. Again, you should have plenty. Now I'm gonna bring these little uh, tree lines or grass lines all the way to the edge past these mountains. I want that grass to fully cover that area. Now, normally, 
we wait for things to dry. But this is your one exception where you don't have to wait for this to dry to go over on top of it. Because we're using the same exact color. So we're gonna throw in, I'd say maybe two or three more trees. I'm gonna do three. You guys can do as many as you want, okay? But if you're copying what I'm doing, we're gonna put one tree on the edge right here. And that's gonna be your tallest tree on that side, okay? So we got one super tall tree all the way to the left. We're gonna do um, slightly to the right of that tree, probably in between these two mountains somewhere. We're gonna do a slightly shorter tree. And then I'd say right where this mountain, well, I don't know if you guys did the same kind of mountains, but about right here, yeah, we'll do a, a, sh a tree that's slightly taller than the one that we did on the right. So I'd say about right there. Okay, so once you got your tree lines in, we are going to mimic what we did earlier on the other side and start putting our branches. Uh, it's the same technique that you were using on the other side where you want to fill in the paint using that tip of your brush. Give it that squiggly little branch-like look. And again, this tree seems to be partially going over the edge of the canvas. That is okay. We want that effect. So go ahead and paint your trees in however you want. Uh, personally, when I paint them, I like to do both sides of the tree before I go to the next level. But if you wanted to, you could paint the entire left side like this and then do the right side. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for every tree because it will be harder to mimic each side to make it symmetrical. However, this tree is partially off the page anyway, so we can just fill those lines in. And then your grass by the trees is more than likely going to get covered, okay? So don't be alarmed when you can't see that grass anymore. You really only want to see it where there's no trees anyway to show that, yes, there is forced life happening outside of the trees. And then because we have a tree pretty much next to this one, I'm going a little thicker with the paint on the bottom because it's gonna overlap anyway. And again, you can go in here and dab on in there with the tip of your brush just to make it look a little fuller. But there's your first tree. Go ahead and proceed to your next one once you finish number one. Remember, trees grow abnormally in nature. So if you were tree looks different than the one next to it, that is okay. You don't want them to look identical. Give them their own personality. Finish up this last tree right here. Dab those middles in. All right, we got one more tree, our little guy right here. I'm gonna get him painted in, and then after that, we are gonna go in and paint this night sky. 
You got these squiggly little branches. And I painted him a little crooked, but that's okay because we can make him look pretty straight regardless. All right. Now, once you've finished up your trees, you're going to go ahead and clean your small brush very thoroughly, okay? Because our next paint color is white, and we absolutely want all this black paint out of this brush before we go on with the white. Otherwise, you will not be painting with white. You'll be painting with gray. Now, if you want your moon to be gray, then okay, no problem. But if you want that moon to be white against that colorful background, you absolutely need to clean your brushes, okay? So I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna clean out my brushes and then we are going to start with the white paint. So it is officially time to add on that white paint. So if you look at our original painting, uh, we have a moon and we have some stars up there. Um, there are a couple different ways we can do the stars. So let's, let's actually start with that. So um, I would actually recommend if you have them at home, depending on what size stars you want, either a Q-tip or a toothpick, okay? I have both here. I'm gonna use both so you guys can see what we're, we're working with here. But I would lightly, uh, dunk that q-tip into the paint okay and then maybe dab it on a piece of paper once or twice first and then just start going in and giving yourself a couple little dots there okay now as you can see all of mine aren't necessarily full circles so i'm gonna lightly tap them over that to make them look full these are some pretty big stars, but hey, stars come in all kinds of sizes. All right, so those are what your big stars would look like if you use a Q-tip. If you use a toothpick, you are going to get much finer stars, much tinier. Now, be careful when you're doing the Q-tip because Q-tips, if you press it too hard against the canvas, you can poke a hole in the canvas, okay? Now, I'm not going to put that many stars in this area in the middle because that's where I want to put my moon. But I am going to fill them in in as many places as I can. So as you get those stars in, you can see it's starting to look more like a night sky. And then you, you can't really put too many. You put as many as you want, you know? You can put as little as you want to. You don't have to put stars if you don't want to. However, I think it's a nice touch. And you can get them in those hard to reach places. Now there's another technique to make stars that requires putting paint on the bristles of your brushes and then flicking that paint um, that's actually the technique I used when I made the first sample of this painting. Um, it can be kind of difficult sometimes too, depending on how liquidy your paint is or how much paint you put on. And I thought it would probably be safer for us to just do this this way instead. But if you're feeling adventurous and you have extra paper and canvas at home, I would recommend trying that technique. Um, I'm not going to show you an example of that right now because we've already put stars on here. 
However, maybe in the future we can touch on that. All right, so I put a bunch of stars in, as you guys can see. I am going to go ahead and put in my moon. So you can make it a full moon. You can make it a crescent moon. It's whatever you guys want to do. I am going to do a crescent moon like that. I'm just freehanding this. It's not going to be perfect, guys. It's okay. If you want it to look more like a perfect circle, feel free to trace something on your canvas. Um, if you have chalk at home, you can use chalk on canvas over paint, and then when everything is dry, you can wipe away the, the chalk, and no one will even know that you drew on your canvas with it. Uh, you can also use paint, or uh, don't use paint, you can also use pencil, but with pencil, you risk the idea that uh, the pencil marks may remain on your canvas even after you've covered them in paint. Especially because we're using white paint right now, uh, you may end up seeing some of those pencil marks through white paint. So just be mindful of that if you do use pencil. It's really not that serious though. Your moon doesn't have to be a perfect circle. As you can see, mine is not. So I'm just going to even that out a little bit more. Give it that moon shape. If you happen to have a smaller brush at home, it may be beneficial to use it for this moon. However, it's not necessary. And again, if you don't want to do the crescent moon, you can definitely do a full moon which may be a little easier because it is a full circle. All right, so I think I wanna do a second coat of this yellow, or wow, white paint on this moon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple more stars around it while that dries. And then when you're doing multiple paint, uh, layers of paint on something, you do want to try and get the paint to be as dry as possible before you put on your second coat. Otherwise, it could peel up some of the previously put down paint if it's not dry enough. We don't want that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just pile on some white paint here, just so you guys can see what it'll look like if it is actually fully white and not splotchy. And voila, that is your painting. So, all right guys, and here is, on the left is our sample that we were painting off of. On the right is the finished product from today's painting workshop. So thanks so much for tuning into Virtual Painting with Twist, and we'll see you next month for our next painting. Bye.